Ah, uh, video's not working. says it's working. Audio says it's working. Music says it's working. Hmm. I just tried turning it off and on again. Oh, hang on. We got weird bugs. We got weird bugs, and we keep them in cases. We take pictures of them. We're entomologists. Uh... <sighs> there we go. Okay. Hey, there we go. There's some really dark, some dark screens. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, I need to publicize this briefly. Doop. Oh goodness, where's all my stream stuff? Okay, stream, stream. <laughs> uh, do I have all the right audio? Yes, looks like I do. Okay, so um, now that we've been going for two minutes, basically uh, this guy has this ring that he's trying to make with an emerald up top and he is not happy with his surfaces. So we've got like kind of a a weird jog right there arising from edges not matching up right. Apparently this profile is good. This view actually looks fine. Wish could drop the ring face, ring flat face height to make a smoother curve. That makes the same dip. Hmm. Sounds like this guy's got a problem with his surfaces just aren't controlled very well. So um, I'm going to take sort of a random stab at this based on a model that I asked him to put up on to just post it somewhere. So we put it up on GrabCAD. I should actually give that a like. Just can I like that? I'm signed in, right? Oops. No, go back. Oh, I have to actually click like. I can't just click on likes. That tells me who likes it. <laughs> okay, so we've got this model. Let's take a look at it. I think I already opened it. Nope, I did not. Signet ring, solid part. And this really ought to be off on another monitor. Okay. So, he's got this cut extrude, this loft. Actually, let's, let's take a look at it with part viewer. This can be a lot easier. Come back to the start. So he starts off with rough dimensions. How does he trim this? Is this already seven millimeters thick? No, it's 10 millimeters. So he's doing this height, but he's not controlling this width, which is probably a little weird. Then he fillets it to get that out of radius. Two planes for his height. And then this very gross loft. <laughs> oh no. Hmm. What I'm gonna start by doing is, well, actually, hang on, this sketch is a void to find. Oh, I see what he's gonna done. He doesn't know about, um, so actually, I, I'm gonna definitely send a link to this guy later on, but um, one of the, oh, does he have it constrained there? That's very odd. Hang on, let's ex exit this sketch. And come over here and say, um, flip side to cut. 
that'll remove all the material on the outside, which is what he wanted. Um, that changes how these edges are created though, so it will delete the fillet references. We can just repair those and it'll capture that. SolidWorks happens to be pretty good about that. Um, oh, hang on. I need to check. Uh, nope. Okay. Nothing important. <laughs> Whoops. Which window? Ah. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, I'm having a little bit of a scattered brain moment. Apologies. <laughs> um, but quick rundown, just for, it looks like I have one viewer now and I've had four different playbacks now. So it looks like the issue here is he's got some sort of weak controls on how how he's controlling his faces and that tends to make things really gross. Hmm, that's interesting. Has he divvied up these sketches? No, nope, these are just straight ellipses. Ah, they're not constrained though. He didn't constrain them by orientation. I just added a vertical constraint right there that um, will keep this upright. You can see that it went from, it's black right now, but if I remove that constraint that I just added, it goes back to blue and that would let me do this which is not very helpful. So we'll fix that. Um, it's not clear if he wants this. I'll look, I think if we go and look at one of the drawings, um, oh, do I even have the, here we go, yeah. It looks kind of like he wants that to be a flat, sort of oval around the edge. I mean, I don't know exactly what he's going for. What what I can do is come back here. Let's see, he just cuts that out of there. These two fillets break because it's looking for edges that no longer exist. Oh, nuts. It's failing to create the fillet. Ooh, that's gross. Build operations should never cause big holes in geometry like that. It has me a little worried now. I hope that's how it was. So let's do a quick undo and see if I can figure out which edges were selected. Oh, he did, he did these two lower edges with tangent prop, and then he did that's very weird. Okay, let's repair those two. See if we can't... Yeah, those just work when you just pick them. I don't know. That's beyond me. So we'll... Ooh, actually. Save as modified. Definitely don't want to save over as original. Yep, rebuild errors, that's fine. He went back after the fact and fixed that fillet feature there. So there's there's some some fillet silliness going on here, but that's that's always fixable. And this last cut extrude to do a pocket into there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's delete this face. Let's just get rid of all that entirely and kind of leave that open and hanging out in the void. We already know we have this surface out here that works really well. It doesn't really break. Oops, hang on, rebuild. I need to figure out what that graphical glitch is. Sometimes things just become transparent. But I think with a single boundary surface, it would be possible to cleanly... Um... Oh, yeah, sorry. I, um, I did that at the start of the stream, but I realized I didn't really cover all that. So, our SolidWorks three days ago, this guy posts um, a ring that he's working on, and his... It seems like his objective is to get clean surfaces. You can kind of see how this this doesn't really look like it matches. It, I can tell he's not experienced because he's not using the zebra stripes tool, which I'll show in just a sec, um, to show where his curvature where his curvature lies and make sure that his surfaces all line up nicely. Um, but you can tell that he's having some issues cleaning up and getting those surfaces to play nicely. So um, he says he I think he mentions that he likes this profile. Um, to make a smoother curve. I'm not really sure what he means by that. Like if he just 
done a paint.net onto the side of that. Just a quick, or even just a quick little MS Paint sketch to explain how he wants these surfaces here. That'd be better. But my goal is really to figure out, uh, since I'm trying to learn surfacing, since it seems to be handy for a lot of um, more product designy things, I want to see if I can make this guy's uh, this guy's surface come out clean. Um, he mentioned, actually, the reason I have this model, if we come down here, I asked him to post a, post uh, post the model. Um, he admits that the one he's got, that he's posted, probably isn't the same as what he's posting in the pictures, but that's what I'm working with right now. So that I that gets me all the way up to... Um, well, we can go and open the model he posted. That gets me all the way up to this model, which looks all right, but it, you can tell it still has some of these sort of interesting not lying flat issues. Now, you could just slap a curvature continuous fillet on it and call it a day, but I get the feeling this guy doesn't want to do that. <laughs> so, hopefully that's enough background. Um, now I'm going to dive into trying to fix this surface, so let's take a stab at it. Um, boundary surface. Uh, you know, direction one. Actually, clear selections and we're going to start with the selection manager instead so I can pick the whole loop all at once and say okay and now I can tell this whole thing curvature to face and it'll try and match the curvatures of the stuff around it so that looks good now I need to add another loop and so let's just send it let's see what happens if I just nope okay would produce self-intersecting geometry off to a great start <laughs> No, okay, doesn't like me. Hmm. He mentioned he wanted this top surface lower, so I think we're gonna start with that. Let's bring this down to like nine millimeters. Ooh, that actually brings it a lot closer than I thought. Um Oh, it even kicks it out too, because he's got this geometry down here is defined by the position of this stuff, and because I'm doing a delete face afterwards, um Let's, uh, because I'm doing a delete face afterwards, it adjusts the shape of all this geometry I'm trying to interface with, which is kind of gross. <laughs> hmm. Doesn't want to play nice, so what I'm going to do is let's do a curvature continuous fillet. Or change this fillet to curvature continuous. Try and capture all this. Nope. Never mind. Saw it works will crash instead of giving me uh, my beautiful curvature continuous fillet figures. Ah, okay. Rebooting. I should have grabbed some water. Alas. Maybe I've got a water bottle somewhere. Nope. Okay. Signet ring modified. I suspect part of the problem is that uh, this billet here happens to work in a really gross way on this surface interface. So I'm going to get rid of that second fillet like I did before. Come back up to this fillet. It still works. It's not perfect though. So I'm going to do a quick on this guy and this guy. Not 10 millimeters, but maybe 3 millimeters. Curvature continuous. I don't know why it doesn't want to finish out. Failed to create fillet. That is a new one. Let's try it smaller. Oops. And I just broke my music, one sec. <laughs> uh, now I have to guess where I was. <laughs> Sorry about that. It really does not like trying to make a fillet in there. Yeah. What if we come up before this cut extrude? Oh, 10 millimeter might break it. 
I would certainly expect it to. Oh, we've got some surface orientation issues here. Okay. Let's try fixing this loft first and seeing if I can't tell it. Uh, start end constraints. Curvature to face. Nope. Self-intersecting. Awesome. Tangency to face. That's better. It's not great, obviously. That, uh, that still looks really gross. Let's shrink that down a little bit. That's a little more reasonable. I think it's kind of weird to have this um, sort of bulge, but I'm not the designer. I'm just trying to get a clean face. Now, the other thing is, if I try to make a fillet here, it shouldn't actually do anything because these faces are now tangent. I've got tangent propagation on and it's not even trying to do anything. Hmm. It's too large to fit the surrounding geometry. I haven't seen that one before, but my wild guess is it means that this is just too close to smooth that it's it's just not going to work. So this profile looks good. This profile still looks a little jacked up. Hmm. Let's so bring this down to maybe 8.5. That looks more reasonable. I'm... Let's see, if we come up top here, you can still see that we've got this sort of interesting uh, light reflection that just looks wrong. And it seems like there's still sort of a... Oh, you know what that is? If we take a look at this loft from over here, or actually from over here would be better. This outer profile being too low is what's causing this sort of divot right in here. That that offsets what's doing it. So if you brought this up to like 0 0.25, whoops, hang on. What's going on here? Oh, that's to the bottom plane. All right, let's make this 8.75 because I want to keep the top height, but I want to adjust where that lower layer is. So if we bring that up a little bit and bring that narrower, we still get kind of some funky hoop shape going on, which isn't great. Point five. That looks better, but it's still a lot of um, it's a lot of fiddliness to get this to get this surface smooth. Let's turn on zebra stripes for a sec just to see how, what that looks like. Whoops, that is extra trippy. <laughs> And I don't know why it's having some trouble. That's gross. Okay, so what we've got is multiple reversals and curvature on the surface. We've got bulges and we've got divots, and there's not really, and they're not really clean. So first things first, let's actually go back to that fillet that's causing that sharp edge that you can see on the zebra on the zebra stripes there. Change this to curvature continuous. And now we get some kind of funkiness going on with which faces it's deciding to bring up here. But it doesn't have any guide curves yet, so I don't know where that's coming from. Frustrating. But zebra stripes. Whoops. Oh man, I need to figure out where that bug's coming from. Now you can see that we've got some kind of smooth surfaces on the edges of those edges of those fillets. So that's that's playing a lot more nicely, at least. Hmm. Take that cut extrude. I wonder if this part's symmetric. So let's run that actually. Single plane, uh, right plane. Whoops. Hang on. <laughs> I don't know how to use symmetry check because I don't use it that often. Uh, single plane. I only need to do the right plane. Check. I get the feeling this is going to cause it to 
So let's take a look. Is it pinned to core? Oh, no, it's done. Is it? This is weird. Hmm. Yeah, okay, it must have pinned a core somewhere. One of these is going to be stuck to the top. Maybe this guy? There it is. Yeah. <laughs> There's our pinned core. SolidWorks is just totally occupying that one, trying to figure out if it's mirrored. So it's probably trying to analytically check everything, but it's like, you can only solve it numerically, so... Oh, goodness. Rather than wait for that to finish, I'm just going to kill it and restart it. Because that's such a complex surface that it's going to take ages for SolidWorks to figure that out. I don't feel like waiting. <laughs> Oh, Starlink mission in half an hour. So, this is probably going to last at most for half an hour more. <laughs> Alright, reopening. Oh, man, I need to save more often because I keep not doing these very critical operations. Let's change these guys to curvature continuous. This one came down to like 8.75. Oh, the loft. Tangent to faces. That too. That's very important. Tangency to face. It's not perfect, but that does clean up that area in there a little bit. Repairal missing references. Nope, that doesn't work. Why doesn't that work? Nuts. Theoretically, those edges are all tangent in there because this face is tangent to this face, but it's never actually the case, is it? If I turn off tangent propagation. Nope, that breaks it. That breaks it bad. <laughs> okay, tangent propagation on. Picks up those two faces because they're tangent. You know what? It might be throwing a fit just because this is too small. So if I shrink this down to like 0.25. Yeah, it totally is. Look. If I get this up to 0 0.4 maybe. 0 0.4 or 5. 0 0.45 fails. Yeah. It's having an issue getting too close to this sort of complicated geometry up here. Hmm. So what happens if I then come to the bigger of these two guys and say 9.5 uh, 11.5 which is starting to get on the edge of reasonable modifying the uh, the geometry but oh man that loft just looks super gross 11 12 wait a minute that seemed like it didn't move it how I would expect it to oh no it got wider okay it's just getting really gross. Hmm. I'm just a little worried, I think, because eventually there's there's only so much tweaking you can do to this model to get it to play more nicely. Because eventually the issue you're going to run, run into is that it wasn't from the start. Whoops. Hang on. That shouldn't be nine. <laughs> eventually the issue you run into is that the model simply wasn't done from first principles to play nicely. So you'll never end up with something clean, I guess. Um, 
the other problem is I don't really know what the final geometry is supposed to look like. I mean, I, I can make guesses at how these curves are failing, but unfortunately for what's the guy's username, Gregbo24, I'm not really sure what to do here, friend. Although I am going to save it and try one more, try and try one more boundary face. So let's let's do that at least. Grab all these faces, get rid of them. We now got two surface bodies. And selection manager, pick me a face, please. Thank you. And then we'll. Hang on. Why is that? Oh. Ugh. <laughs> okay. In this loft, there is an option that I think may not be checked called Merge Tangent, Merge Tangent Faces. No, what? It is checked. That's horrible. <laughs> and it's still telling me those faces aren't tangent. That's... Oh, goodness. Hmm. Okay, let's come up here. We know this base has eight control points on it, forming like, or we know that it's got eight edges. So we're gonna, I'm gonna try and replicate that on the on these higher up sketches, and then see if I can't use that to control. where all of my sort of interesting geometry happens. That's horizontal constraint, vertical constraint, vertical constraint. That gives me four points I can move together. Now, same thing. Did I? Oh, I don't think I did a second split on this guy. Maybe I did. Nope, I don't think I did. Okay. So... One more split entities up here. And we're gonna just rectangulate those and make them all rectangular. Okay, now I've got four points I can move around and I can use that to control where stuff lines up. And these edges are what's gonna are what I'm going to use to control where these fillet edges line up. So I can drag them out a little bit, exit sketch, and the loft fails. Because why wouldn't it? <laughs> uh oh. What'd I do? <laughs> I broke sketch four. Oh, gross. Oh, it's a half millimeter offset. That is very weird, and I'm going to change that. Um, <laughs> it's just going to be 0.5 mil on the side, 0.5 mil on the top, because offsets tend to make weird, gross things happen. <laughs> Hey, there's something different. Still gross, but something different. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure. produces these weird edges in here. I don't want to say that this model is unfixable because there's always something... Well, 
I was gonna say there's always something you can do to fix a model, but I've definitely had totally unfixable models that I've just had to rebuild from scratch before, so I can't even say that. I think, so, to um, Greg Bo 24 my advice to you. Um, I think the best thing you can really do is look at the geometry you want to create and don't take any shortcuts to get there. I won't say that this model has shortcuts taken to get to it, but there are modeling methods used, for example, um, using these two planes to create lop surfaces, creating the bottom one first and then the top surface. That makes sense if you know where you want your inset to be, but I'm not sure that that's necessarily what you want. Like, I just looking at this model, it seems like it would matter a lot more to control where this top surface is relative to the, the center point of the ring. So you'd you'd want to dimension that plane to be, you'd dimension that plane first, say that's 10 millimeters above, and then control the height of your second profile by making a plane below it rather than the, the lower plane than the top plane. Um, I'll take a stab at that in a bit just to show how that changes how you can control things, but um, hmm. To switch to tree view for that too um but i think really the gist here is that there's a lot of lessons to be learned by just trying to make this a lot of different ways and seeing which ones give you control um different methodologies apply to the model so um yeah that's not super helpful but hmm Let's, let's do a quick, um, grab some quick dimensions off this. Let's see, 19 OD, 19 OD, four at the bottom. And here's another interesting thing. Your, um, your upper OD seems like it's maybe a little larger than it should be, but it's not really clear. Man, I wish I could talk to you. That'd make this so much easier. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's take a quick stab at... Let's see, this was in millimeters, so... Quick extruded boss on the front. What this part looks like to me is it's sort of an elliptical cut or it, it'll get a little wider across the top, right? So let's try that instead. Um, make that construction, but it's 19 millimeters. Say I want this top flat to be even only 10 mil. Oh, whoops, hang on, that's not right. Can I make that tangent? I want to make sure that the minimum curvature is, is no smaller, but I really, I'm realizing that I have no idea how to control that, so. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, is there an equation for minimum curvature of a, of an ellipse? Uh oh, math stack exchange. Curvature. I want the minimum curvature. Which. What? Oh. Oh, I see. It's large and parametric, and I'm not going to deal with that. <laughs> so I'm just going to guess <laughs> and make this 22. Just trim the top off here. 15. Kind of shrink things up a little. Maybe 21. 21 seems okay. So this was a 10 millimeter midplane extrude, as I recall. Oops, hang on. 
Oh, not up to body. Mid plane, please. Extruded cut. Whoops. Nope. Extruded cut from the right plane. Just draw our lines up. Because I know that these two are locked top and bottom, I can say equal, and then they'll they'll just automatically be equivalent to each other, which is nice. I think this was four millimeters on the bottom. I flip side to cut through all both. That was something that I mentioned briefly in passing earlier, but um, if we go back to this sketch, uh, what, Greg, what you've done was just draw an extra surface out here, and that doesn't really play so nice with an extruded cut because you're making lots, like, you're just assuming that your geometry is never going to get bigger than that, which maybe that's fine, but um, keeping flip to side off and then doing through all both, if you don't know about flip side to cut, then you have to add that exterior surface. But flip side to cut lets you cut outside of your profile instead of inside, which super duper powerful, saves you time on creating geometry, all that fun stuff. So we'll get rid of that real quickly. And get rid of all this. And the cut extrudes will cut through the middle because you don't have a flip to side to cut. But if we enable that, then it just gets cut to the stuff on the outside. Um, fillet. These were one millimeter and curvature continuous, just to make them nice. Now, the plane trick I talked about earlier. Top plane, we want this. 11 millimeters off even and then we'll define our next plane relative to our top one just because that seems more appropriate for the geometry we're trying to create flip offset so now we're below it now i can control where my top is and the bottom will follow let's bring that back down to 11 do a quick ellipse And I'm going to take a wild guess that this guy was, oops, I think it was 10 and 8. And we need some, we need an extra vertical constraint to keep this thing oriented. Exit sketch. Yep, okay, that guy's on the right plane. Oops. Sketch. Actually, I'm going to do something kind of tricky here. Um, first of all, hide these planes. Don't need to see them. I'm going to offset this. No, oh, actually, let's do something cooler. We don't even have to define this second plane. We can just extrude this guy at a 45 degree angle. If he was trying to extrude down one millimeter and out 0.5, and he wanted that to be a chamfer, which it kind of looks like he did based on how some of his some of his other faces ended up. Um, let's do 0.5 millimeters. Uh, draft outwards. We're just going to do a quick equation here. 0.5 over 1, I think. Is that right? No, I want 1 over 0.5. And I forgot it does that in degrees because SolidWorks is terrible. <laughs> So I gotta multiply this times 180 over pi, I think. Really ought to get that fixed, that's really annoying. Oop, wrong direction. Draft outward. Magical tech magical checkboxes. So now we have this nice outer profile. Um let's try lofting up to it. Well, actually that still looks kinda gross. Um, a tan. Let's just do one times 180 over pi. And that gets us to 45 degrees. I could have just written 45 degrees. I don't know why I went to all that extra effort. Um, lofted boss. From this face up to this face. Uh, merge tangent. Start ends. Let's do curvature to face and see if it'll hack that. Probably won't. Yeah, tangents to the face. 
Nope, still won't, still won't do that either. Okay. Um, what happens if I make this guy a little higher? Lofted boss. Yeah, without any control or guide curves on there, using a 3D sketch, it's just going to be a little bit tricky. Tangency still produces... Let's bring this down to, like, strength down to 0.5. No, oh, that still looks kind of nasty. I'll add another curvature control up on the top there and see if that maybe cleans it up a little. A little bit. Still not perfect. And still really gross there. Hmm. I think worst of all, if we come and look at the side, I don't really like how the shape of that, so. Yeah. Um, one last bit, I think I'll probably end this here in just a bit. Um, really, this is the sort of thing you can't do without guide curves. If, if you're going to do a loft and you want to have fine control, you need to have a 3D sketch, you need to have splines, you need to have guide curves. Um, uh, there's really not much more to it than that. I can confirm that from the uh, the surfacing CSWPA, Certified SolidWorks Professional Advanced, uh, or the, the advanced surfacing exam, you do really need to use guide curves a lot. And they ask you to do composite curves, um, pretty much anything that you can think of in, in the surfaces pile, they're gonna ask you to use. So yeah, it's a gnarly one. If you have questions, of course, chuck them in the comments or uh, DM me on Reddit. I'm always open to answering questions or even like if if you can uh, if you want to reach out to me and like just do a call or something and I'll happy to give you any more tips see how to model this better but um, I, I don't know man it's tricky yeah all right um, thanks for coming and watching uh, have a nice night um, I hope nobody popped in right as I uh, am about to end it but um, yeah have a nice night boop <laughs>